With everything going on in the world today, right now could be the best time ever to diversify your retirement savings with precious metals like gold and silver. I just bought some precious metals myself and I got them from the top rated company, Gold Co. They couldn't have made the process easier and their customer service was impeccable. Gold Co. has helped thousands of people just like you and me place over $2.5 billion in gold and silver. They're rated a by the Better Business Bureau. They've earned over 5,000 five-star reviews. They're a seven-time incorporated 5,000 winner. And that's just mentioning a few of their accomplishments. There's plenty more. Right now, for my listeners, they're offering up to $10,000 in bonus silver. You heard that right, up to $10,000 in bonus silver, but only while supplies last. Go to goldco.com slash guy to learn more. That's goldco.com slash guy. Diversify your savings with gold and silver today at goldco.com slash guy. Hey guys, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for listening. This is your host, Guy Jeans with the Kern River Fly Shop. And I'm going to give you guys some info that's going on right now in the Kernville, Kern Valley area, the Southern Sierra area, and the fishing conditions. Uh, I'm going to start off with uh, the Kernville air temps uh, today are 64 degrees. We'll be getting a low of 34 degrees. So if you're going to be camping out there, definitely uh, bring your warm sleeping bag and all that good stuff. Um, the upper Kern is actually flowing about uh, 500 CFS from the Kernville powerhouse down to the lake. And uh, that flow is a lot more than, say, above the powerhouse. If you go above the powerhouse, which is about three miles up from the Kern River Fly Shop, if you go up the road and you go past that, the flows are a lot lower. They're like around 50 CFS. So it's a, you can walk and wade that area really easily. You can also walk and wade the, the area that's uh, below the um, powerhouse as well. But, um, you know, the flows are perfect. Um, you have uh, the flows going from the powerhouse down to town, which are 500 and above that for about 15 miles. It's uh, roughly about 50 to 60 CFS. And then once you go above the Fairview Dam, um, it goes back up to about the 450 CFS range as well. So kind of give you guys a ballpark with that kind of flow. <clears throat> You're going to see uh, a lot of people uh, waiting, uh, wearing their waders, using their waiting staffs out there. And um, it's just super fun. There's hardly anybody up fishing during the week as well. So if you can get up during the week, it's really, really beautiful. Um, the leaves are changing and all that kind of stuff. The river looks amazing. Um, it's crystal clear. Um, it's super healthy, like I've been saying in some of the other podcasts. Um, you can see everything. You can see the fish uh, coming up and taking your dry fly, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. Um, the fish seem to be everywhere. They're stacked all over the place. Um, they're in really shallow water. Um, the other day I watched uh, a guy uh, fishing with a bunch of people um, and he was walking right through the water where the fish were and um, I, didn't think he, I don't think he knew that the fish were right there um, by his um, friend's feet and that sort of thing but they were walking right through the real shallow water it's about a foot to you know a foot and a half deep and the fish are all stacked in that really shallow stuff so when you're walking out into the river and you're going to go to that really sweet spot that you want to get to you know definitely fish the water that's right in front of you and fish your way out to that water there's a good tip right there um, the fish seem to be stacking up in those little shelves um, when you're walking out there you'll see where it's shallow and then you'll see a big trough and uh, you know some structure where the fish can move around and get their food and that sort of thing that's the type of water you want to be looking for um, big boulders smaller boulders um, even gravel bars where there's big big trenches in those gravel bars about a foot deep those fish are still stacked up in there in that water water temperature I checked it uh, yesterday and it was about 48 degrees and I've been seeing in different sections different uh, water temperatures um, down below town um, where they're putting water back in the water temperature is a little bit cooler you know 48 degrees sometimes 46 degrees in that water below the powerhouse if you go above that and you go up into that section between uh, the powerhouse and McNally's and say like that area the water temperature seems to be a little bit warmer and I, I took a temperature up there and it was about 50 degrees 
Um, and just because it's lower, definitely lower water, uh, not flowing as much, um, it's going to warm up a little bit more. Um, so you can you can experience different uh, things going on in, in each section uh, as you go up. Hatches have been amazing um, through from September when we finally got on the water until now. Um, we've been seeing some really good hatches, some really good mayfly hatches. Um, we've been seeing uh, blue wing olives. We've been seeing mahogany duns and peak alberts. Um, a lot of people, um, when they see these uh, the pink alberts, they they look kind of like a, a pale morning dun. They have that kind of like that cream color as well, um, but they're not uh, pale morning duns. They're called pink alberts, and you can check those out. Those are about size 16, and we got some great imitations in the shop to imitate those if you guys want to check them out. Um, but we've been fishing uh, those type of flies, lighter colored flies, um, to get these fish to come up on the surface. And they've been coming up about, it's been getting later and later. So the, the hatch we've been seeing is later in the evening now. Whereas a couple of weeks ago it was early, it was like 10.30 in the morning. And it would go until about 12. But now it's going to, since the water's cooled down, um, they are coming up about uh, 2.30. And the hatch is coming off about that until about dark. And uh, if you can stay out and fish until about dark, the hatches uh, right before dark have been epic. So it's kind of a fun thing to experience if you get a chance to do that. Um, so some of the flies that we've been using uh, for these uh, mayfly patterns, um, just your everyday blue wing olive size 20 has been working. Um, we've also been using uh, parachute atoms in the size 20, it's kind of a small one. And I've been doing a lot of experimenting. I've been fishing with my clients uh, really slow water where the fish get a really good look at the flies. And I've been fishing riffly water with them um, where they are kind of more opportunistic. And so when we're fishing that real slow water, you can actually see the trout come up and look at the fly. And most of the time is saying, nope, I'm not going to take that. And you have to be pretty exact or, you know, have a really good imitation of what they're actually eating. So in some of those areas, in those slow areas, I've been going smaller with my flies, um, small uh, size 20 parachute atoms or even uh, blue wing olive emergers, you know, in the size uh, 20 to 22 range, unfortunately for us that have uh, eyes that can't see that well that's a little bit more difficult to put the uh, tippet through that little tiny eye there um, but uh, uh, that's what they're eating in those areas now if you go and fish this the, the uh, riffly water um, you can use flies that uh, are a little bit bigger and I've been using this great fly uh, called a scatus which we have in the shop and it's about a size so I've been using between size 16 and size 18 and it works really really good in the faster water and um, it floats really good i just recently went out fishing with my daughter brooke and she was using that fly and she was just tearing it up um, in the riffly water and again in that really shallow riffly water about a foot deep or so so definitely check that out um, the riffly waters um, with some of those flies it's a lot of fun um, some of the uh, leader construction that we're using um, for, with dry flies, you know, you can use a nine foot 5X leader um, that's tapered, or you can even use a bigger one. You could use a, a 4X nine foot tapered leader. Um, but adding, you know, uh, tippet is pretty important to get those uh, really good drifts. So um, adding, you know, some 5X or 6X tippet definitely for those smaller flies is gonna be an advantage and getting a really good drift in that slower water I was talking about earlier. Um, having a longer leader helps with that uh, with that drag, you know, so your fly looks natural. That's one of the things too is when you're fishing with uh, for these fish on the kern, is uh, definitely you know sneak up on them and try to get a good drift. Don't stand up on top of rocks and wave your fly rod all over the place. Um, try to hide behind that rock, that kind of thing. That'll give you an advantage for sure. Um, so that's the upper kern. Um, if you guys get a chance to come up and fish the upper kern soon, um, definitely come up and check it out right now. It's uh, it's pretty prime and it's still fishing really good. Um, up at the uh, Johnsondale Bridge area, 
um, if you were to continue up into the wild trout section uh, above that um, by the way that's fishing really good as well if you go up into the wild trout section and even go to the forks of the kern um, i haven't been up to the forks of the kern um, in the last uh, week or so but um, people are coming back saying they're having a great time up there fishing in that section and also above the johnsonville bridge they're catching uh, lots of fish up there so that's something that you might want to check out as well but if you continue up the road and go up to the Johnsondale, um, the air temperatures are getting cool up there as well. It's 61 degrees up there and 37 degrees at night. Um, so definitely want to uh, bring your sleeping bag, warm sleeping bag up in those areas if you're going to continue up there. If you continue up the hill up to around 8,000 feet to Ponderosa, um, it's 48 degrees uh, up there and it's getting down to 35 degrees at night so something to uh something to check out so let's go over to the south fork which is completely on the other side of um, the mountain but um, they're flowing about 65 cfs and um they are uh over by the kennedy motos area they're getting uh, really nice looking golden trout over there um, a guy stopped by the shop and was showing me some of the pictures of some of the fish that they're getting over there and it looks pretty awesome and all dry flies and the guy is all man i'm not even a very good fly fisherman and i'm catching these things so it's uh it's not a lot of hard hard work over there you can catch a bunch of fish and have a great time um, up at the black rock ranger station which is up from kennedy meadows the air temperatures over there are getting up are getting down to 42 degrees um, that's their high and it's it's getting down to 33 degrees so definitely uh, moving into the to the fall and getting that those cooler temps for sure um, the creeks we haven't been spending too much time on the creeks because uh, the rivers are finally fishing so good so um, you know the creeks are are always going to be good um, at this time um, just because we had such a big snowpack so you can go up there and fish a lot of the creeks all over the southern sea and still have a good time but I've been telling people, you know, why go up there uh, when the when the upper current and the south fork of the current are fishing so good. So um, techniques, other techniques that we're using out there, uh, dry uh, dropper, have a big dry fly on with a, a little nymph underneath that, or even doing a double dry. Um, some people can't see those really tiny number 20 parachute atoms out there in that light, so they'll put a bigger dry fly on that they can see and then right from the bend of the hook they'll tie a, a smaller uh, parachute atoms and then it kind of works as an indicator kind of um, <clears throat> also uh, you can you can do do straight nymphing if you want um, you know when the, the hatch is not working but I've been finding that fish are coming up uh, even if you're um, even if they're not rising and, and showing you know there's a hatch going on you can still get them to come up so um, right now I've just been exclusively using a dry dropper or just straight dry fly with uh, my clients and my personal fishing as well um, but a lot of people are still nymphing out there and having a good time um, Lake Isabella is actually fishing really good um, the bass fishing is really good. one of my friends uh, guides on Lake Isabella and he's been tearing it up out there and having a good time with his clients and they've been getting some pretty big bass out there so that might be something that you guys might want to do as well um, I just haven't had any focus on it right now because the, the river's been so amazing and beautiful and been putting most of my attention on on the river as much as possible so uh, a couple of little uh, things I wanted to tell you guys about. I am doing a dry fly clinic this Saturday, November 11th, from 12 o'clock in the afternoon until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So we're going to try to catch that that late hatch, um, learn some different casts, the reach cast, the, the um, wiggle cast, the pile cast, um, different roll casts, all that stuff that you're going to use for fishing uh, dry flies to rising trout. So that's a dry fly clinic. You can check it out at kernriverflyshop.com. Um, another class that uh, I'm going to be putting on is go fly fishing in the surf class, which is November 25th in Ventura. Um, we're also going to be holding on the, the same day up in Kernville, we're going to be doing another beginner clinic November 25th in Kernville. And the Master Fly Tires, the Bueller Brothers are going to be doing a fly tying clinic um, that evening from 6 to 8 on the 25th in Kernville as well. So definitely check out all those 
uh, cool classes that we got going on. We're still guiding like crazy, so definitely check all that out. Uh, make sure to check out my YouTube channel for some of the latest latest videos that uh, I've been putting out there. Just got a couple of my videos put on the Orvis uh, website about uh, fly casting, the reach cast, and the wiggle cast, which was kind of cool. Um, so definitely check those out. Um, the website is kernriverflyshop.com. And also uh, check out my other podcast, The Guy Jeans Podcast, on iTunes, Spotify, and Waypoint TV. So there you guys have it. Uh, Thanks for listening, you guys, and I will talk to you guys next week. This episode is brought to you by Kern River Fly Shop, located in the beautiful river town of Kernville, California. The Kern River Fly Shop is a fully stocked fly shop for all your fly fishing needs, and everything is online, too, at kernriverflyshop.com. The Kern River Fly Shop also offers guided trips throughout the Southern Sierra and Sequoia National Forest, both for cold water and warm water species. Kern River Fly Shop also offers guided trips on the Owens River and Crowley Lake in the Eastern Sierra. Don't forget about their guided fly fishing in the surf from Morro Bay to Ventura, California. Also, check out the Guy Jean School of Fly Fishing. They offer fly fishing clinics for beginners to advanced students. They also offer warm water, cold water, and salt water clinics as well. Go to KernRiverFlyShop.com to check everything out and get some great discount offers. KernRiverFlyShop.com. Mm-hmm.